Today we are going to see a heat convection problem where we are going to be given some experimental data and from that we are going to try to establish a relationship between convection heat transfer coefficient and velocity. So without further ado, let's look at the problem. So this is the problem statement and it says that air is at 40 degrees Celsius and it's flowing over a long 25 millimeter diameter cylinder with an embedded electrical heater. In a series of tests, measurements are made the power per unit length. So instead of measuring power, which is measured in units of watts, we measured power per unit length. So it would be watts per meter. And we measured the power per unit length, which was required to maintain the cylinder surface temperature at 300 degrees Celsius for different free stream velocities, P of the air. And then there's a table with the air velocity and power P prime, power per unit length P prime. Uh, giving all the values that are found from the experiments. So what this question statement is basically saying, uh, if we are going to draw a sketch of the problem, we're going to see that. So let's start solving it. So we are going to draw a simple sketch. So this is the cylinder. And some air is actually flowing over it. This air has a velocity v, and we know the magnitude of that velocity. So we varied it from 1 to 12 in a series of tests. And for each velocity, we measured what was the power p prime per unit length was required to solve this problem. Uh, and since this cylinder has an electrical heater inside it, so it's like a wire, and it's making this heater getting warmed up. So this whole cylindrical body is getting hotter, and it's going to transfer some of this heat to the air. So during these experiments or a series of tests, we make sure that the surface temperature Ts of this cylinder was kept at 300 degrees Celsius. So let's write that down. And we also know that the air has its own temperature. So we write that with T infinity, which is 40 degrees Celsius. So that was kept. And we know the dimension of the cylinder. So we know the diameter D. And D has a value of 25 millimeters. So these are some of the things we do know. Uh, we do not know the length of the cylinder. So it could be like five meters, could be 10 meters long. We have no idea. But since we have measured the power per unit length, we actually do not need to. We can simply assume that the length is uh, one meter. So that's a simple assumption to make. And that's why probably the people who did the experiments, they measured it per unit length. So we can make our results applicable to any length we want. So the question now asks us to determine the convection coefficient for each velocity and display the results graphically. So this means for each of these velocity we have, there are several velocities, we would have a corresponding transfer coefficient. But for each velocity, we are actually given power per unit length, P prime. So we have to calculate all of these age values, and then we can actually do this H versus V plot, which is the answer of the part A of the problem. And in part C, question asks, if there is a relationship, a functional relationship between H and V, that is the convection heat transfer coefficient and velocity, uh, Let's assume that relationship looks like H equals C times V to the power N. And let's determine C and N. So in order to solve the problem, we're going to make some assumptions. These are going to be pretty standard one. And we have previously seen all of those assumptions before. For example, from heat transfer problem or heat convection problem two. So the first assumption we always make is we assume the problem to be a steady state. Problem. Since the question does not mention anything about time, it's a safe assumption to make. And since we're doing sort of a 
high level conviction heat transfer analysis it's always better to start with simpler assumption like a steady state so now let's move on to number two we're going to assume that it is uniform surface temperature over the cylinder so this actually means if we go back to the cylinder at any point on this cylinder every point has the same surface temperature ts that ts we mentioned here sorry for messing that up let's write it clearly again so whatever the ts value is in this case it's 300 degrees celsius it's always the same everywhere over this center cylinder so so that's the second assumption now let's move on to the number th three assumption it's we and again we are going to make a simplified assumption regarding to the properties we are just going to assume that the thermal properties are constant for example thermal conductivity or whatever any other property of the material is uh, there that would be constant so then we're going to just neglect the transfer from the ends of the cylinder uh, so this assumption is required again to simplify the problem we can actually consider them but they're going to be pretty small so this is one end of the cylinder and we have another end here so we are just saying that there is no heat transfer from these two ends there is nothing going on from those two ends so uh, we are just going to consider the surface area of this surface that i am just sort of making it much more noticeable now so after that we can also neglect conduction and radiation heat transfer so i'm not going to consider them this also helps us solve this problem because the temperature of the surface 300 degrees celsius is quite significant for radiation heat transfer but we are keeping this problem simple and only focusing on convection heat transfer so it's a safe assumption to make but in real world we cannot neglect radiation heat transfer in this case So one more assumption, and this is important. So we're going to assume that all the electrical power generated by the heater goes out by convection. So this assumption actually helps us also neglect the other two forms of heat transfer, or two modes of heat transfer. And since there are no other objects, we only have air and this cylindrical heater. So all of the heat that is being exchanged could be limited between these two objects and that's why we can say that all the electrical power that are generated is transferred to the fluid by convection so now we have met these assumptions so how are we going to solve this problem we're going to use microsoft excel to solve this problem for us and before doing that we also need to actually determine which transfer model we are going to use to solve for heat transfer coefficient or convection heat transfer coefficient we can actually use newton's law of cooling to write q equals h times a s t s minus p infinity so we need to measure q which is typically given in watts but we are given watts per meter. So that means this Q has to be divided by the length. So let's do that. We're going to divide this by length. And we're going to divide this side also by length. And write this. And instead of writing Ts minus T infinity, we're just going to simplify that. And we're going to write it like this. H. And the surface area can be written by pi times d times l this is divided by l and we're going to write the temperature difference so ts minus t infinity as delta t and we know that ts is greater than t infinity 
this ts is 300 degrees celsius and t infinity is uh, 40 degrees celsius so this value is actually this 260 degrees celsius so once you have the equation is in this form uh, you can actually simply change side and simplify it even further but let's cross l from the numerator and the denominator and let's write the equation in this form so q over l is actually p prime so that was the power that was given to us and on this side we have h times pi times t times delta t and we can simply change side to write h equals p prime by pi times t times delta t So now we can actually move to Excel and solve this problem because we know the value of everything in the right hand side. So we know the values P prime from the table. So we just need to create the table in Excel and we'd be good to go. So now we are in Excel and let's write the values of the constants first. So we know D is 25 millimeters. So that would mean it's actually 0 0.025 meters. We are also given the value of delta t. Let's write the surface temperature T is as 300 degrees Celsius. We also have the temperature of the fluid or air in this instance, it's T infinity, which is given as 40 degrees Celsius. And that would mean delta t would be a simple sub fraction of these two things so b2 minus b3 that would give us 260 degree celsius which is the temperature difference so we are going to have to write all the values for p prime and v and in this case we can just simply look from the table put these values in here we know the P prime is given in watts per meter, so let's write that. And this is actually equal to Q. So we just write it down for our understanding. So P prime is given as 450, 658, 983, 1507, and finally 963. And all these values correspond to velocity values, which are given in meters per second and these values are 1, 2, 4, 8, 12. So now we are good to go in terms of calculating the heat convection coefficient h which is units of watts per meter square per degree celsius. Uh, actually there is no power here so let's just erase that. And this would mean we have to divide p prime from the formula we had by 3.1416 which is the value of pi times the value of the diameter so this guy b1 and we want b1 to be a constant value so let's put a dollar sign in here and we want to also divide by delta t which is again a constant value so let's put another dollar sign there and this should give us the heat convection coefficient value corresponding to 450 and the velocity of one so this age value is actually associated with the p prime value of 450 and the velocity value of one so when the experimentalist was flowing air over the cylinder at a velocity of one meter per second. He found that the power per unit length was 450 watts per meter. And that's the power that was required to ma maintain the surface temperature at 300 degrees Celsius. And for that conditions, we actually calculated the heat convection coefficient to be 22 watts per meter squared per degree Celsius. So we can just calculate all the values. And since we need a plot of H and V, 
we want to orient the plot in such a way that it gives us a relationship of h equals c times v to the power n. So this means h should be plotted in the y-axis and v should be plotted in the x-axis. We are going to just copy these values and paste them here as values and select these v values and all these h values. Go to the insert tab, select scatter and we get our plot of h versus v. And let's put the axis levels here. We're going to add some chart elements. So the primary horizontal axis is actually v is in meter per seconds. And we also need a y-axis title. Primary particle would be h, which is watts per meter squared degree Celsius. So, so now we have our h versus p plot. From this plot, we can use an Excel function called adding a train line. So we need to add a train line. So we can add a straight line, obviously, but that does not fit this data points very well. So let's use a power trend line and that fits the data quite well. So we actually need the equation of this line and this is the equation. So let's enlarge it. This is the equation, the power law that would fit the age values and the P values. And from this equation, that the question asks us to fit the data points. From this, it is clear that heat transfer coefficient h and the air velocity v has a power law relationship. And with the increase in v, we can clearly see from the graph that heat convection coefficient increases. And this is the result uh, that is expected because with much higher velocity, we expect the fluid would be able to take away more heat from the cylindrical surface. This means the value of C is actually 21.626 and the value of N is 0 0.5926. And these are the values that the question asked us to determine in part B. And this plot is the answer of part A of the question. So that is how we solve a heat convection problem when we have some tabular data from experiments or from simulation. And from that, we apply Newton's law of cooling to determine heat convection coefficient. And there are other ways to determine this heat convection coefficient. For example, we have to take a logarithm of this equation and then try to fit a straight line using Excel and then back out the values of C and N. However, there is a simpler way to quickly get the values of C and N, which are very close to the uh, very close to the correct approximation since it fits the data very well. And we can actually check that by going to calculating the R squared value, a coefficient of feed value. So the coefficient of feed value is 0.9991. So that means the data points are very well fitted using this trend line. Thank you for watching this video.